Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part two of painting Aetios Raul Carez, the uh, greater demon of Zinch from Forge World, the massive lord of change, the uber chicken. Uh, so you would have seen part one where we covered all of the wings. We're now going to go through part two where I cover how I've painted all of the rest of the snazzy detail. So let's get straight into the video. <laughs> So just a quick reminder, this is where we got to last time. We had done the wings and we're now going to move on to the rest of all the cool detail. I'm going to use Contrast Race Bone Prime for this. And I'm going to be painting this over all of the uh, neck, arms, legs, all of the sort of the skin area really. Um, not worrying about anything else. And to be honest, you could probably do this with any kind of bone colour. I'm not convinced the magical properties of the Contrast base coats. Uh, probably from the sprays are a bit better. But hand painting it, you can put contrast paint over any of these. And what I've done here is used a Blood Angels Contrast Red and painted that all over the skin. And you can see there is a slight uh, non-fade between the uh, part of the neck and the uh, the rest of the body there. We'll get to that a little bit later on. Uh, but don't forget to do the weapon arms that you've got here that are separate. So uh, you've got a hand on one of them and then you've got that full arm on the other one as well. So don't forget to do that when you get to this stage. And all I've done is just leave that to dry. It took about two or three coats uh, of that uh, Wraithbone Prime and then just one nice thick coat, non-diluted down with that Blood Angels Contrast Red. Now just to make the lower portions of the leg look a little bit more worn and a bit more grizzly, we're going to go with a Gore Grunter Fur Contrast Paint mixed with a bit of Contrast Medium. And we're going to apply that to the lower halves, the calves, and below that uh, extra bit of uh, movement that he has in that lower leg limb. So we're not going to go beyond the first join. We're basically going to go from all the toes up to basically where a human shin would be. Uh, you can see I've actually forgot to do the hand there. I've just told you to do the hand and you can see I've primed it, but I haven't done it in red for this bit of the video. But don't worry, I do go back and do that. Uh, so what I've now done is picked out the colour palette for his pyjamas. Because basically they look like pyjamas. You know, okay, his robes, let's be honest. Uh, and I've picked out a colour palette that matches uh, the Changeling. Now I've painted the Changeling up and that will be coming up in a forthcoming video. Um, there's some pictures floating around on Instagram and stuff that I've already taken for those that are following me on there. If not, why not go and follow me there at Old Average Brick Gaming. And you might get a few sneak peeks like the Changeling. Uh, so I've picked out a similar palette to that because it ties in nicely to the other uh, units in the army. So... Uh, uh, as usual, I'll leave a list of all the paints in the description below. And we're going to start off with Calador Sky, I believe, is the first one we're looking at here. So what we're going to do is take our Calador Sky, we're going to thin it down a little bit with water, and then we're going to paint it all over his pyjamas. I'm going to keep calling them pyjamas because, you know, that's what they are. Um, so when we come back on the screen here, all over the, uh, the bits down here, sort of the loin area, all of his arms and everything that looks like his cloth robing. And all we're going to do, it's going to take a two or three thin coats to get this right. You, there's quite a lot of sort of detail and folds and ripples in this material. You don't want to obliterate that at all. So we're just going to go around all of his uh, all of his cloth uh, with Calador Sky. And this is the same method that I actually used for uh, the, um, the Changeling. And the other colours we're using in that colour palette are Techless Blue for the mid-tone and Lothen Blue for the highlight with a little bit of white. Um, so that's going to be the, the main colours that we're going to be doing for his blue robes. And once that first coat is complete, you can see it here, I've picked out all of his cloth, uh, making sure you get the insides of the, uh, the bits between his legs, uh, the fold over the, uh, the chest and all that kind of stuff, uh, and you'll just see exactly how that looks on the screen. So that's about three coats. We're going to take Drakenhoff Nightshade and we're going to shade the whole lot in this. This is a little bit thinned down. Um, but all we're going to do is just shade all of his robes in that and that will just add a little bit of definition to all of the creases and it will darken down that first tone. But before we move on to the highlights, what we're going to do is go back and reapply that uh, Calador Sky layer again. But we're going to make sure that we leave all of the darkness from that, uh, from that shade paint in all of the recesses. So again, similar kind of mix. It's probably about oh, two thirds paint to a third water. And we're just going to go around very carefully and just reapply that base coat uh, to all of the more raised areas. But we're just going to take it right to the very edge of where all those creases are. 
So you can see here, just get. I'm, I'm using a Winsor & Newton Series 1 brush for this. Uh, just depends what brushes you've got, but just be very careful and just pick it all around, uh, making sure you can see all of those ripples in that uh, in that cloak. It's it's going to be a lot of effort, but it's going to be uh, be worth it in the end. So after we've done that that, uh, that next coat there of Calador Sky, this is what we end up looking like. So you can see we've still got the shade in there, um, but we've just brought that uh, the the main raised areas of the cloth back up to that Calador Sky. What we're now going to do is mix 50/50 now with the uh, with the next color up, which is Techless Blue. So you can actually pick up the uh, the natural highlight colors from Games Workshop's own website. They've got a nice little handy chart. I use it quite a lot, so you know which colors to go for when you're mixing up your next blends. So this is going to be about a 50/50 application of uh, of Techless Blue and Calador Sky. This is going to help with the with the transitions because you can see there's an awful lot of fades in here and you just want to make sure that it's a nice fairly smooth transition. You can boot, do this as many times as you want. You can start off, you know, 90 10, 75 25, 60 40, all the different ratios under the sun depending on your time, effort and uh, and levels of painting that you want to do. So what we'll do now is go carefully over where we've just painted, but we're going to leave a little bit of that earlier Calador sky showing. So just as that Calador dips into the recesses, we're going to leave that showing. And we're just going to go back over and just, uh, it's its not quite a glaze, but it's a little bit thicker than a glaze, this kind of paint. So you want it to be a bit more translucent, so you're looking at a little bit more water in your paint mix, so that it doesn't become a very stark transition. And you can do that a couple of times over, and it will just gradually build up the layers. And then what we'll do is we'll rinse and repeat that process with pure uh, Lothen Blue, uh, sorry, with pure Techless Blue, then we'll mix Techless Blue with Lothen Blue, and then we'll use pure Lothen Blue right at the very ends. So I'm not going to show every single stage of that because it is exactly the same every single time. You're just applying it into slightly less places, and then uh, you can see just the effect in the end there. So it's just a very careful rinse and repeat, nice fluid, translucent paint, about 50-50 paint to water, and then you just mix your transitions as many times as you want. You could go straight from uh, Calador to Lothen to Teclas, um, or you can mix it up in different ratios, exactly what I've done here. But what we've done now is uh, we've moved on and we've re-edge trimmed in a Wraith of Bone again, all of the edging around his, uh, his pyjamas. And uh, what we're going to be doing for this is then using one of the uh, uh, next contrast paints, which is uh, Nasdreg Yellow, which when you apply this comes out a very nice a golden colour. Now you could paint this in gold and then highlight and shade it all, but this is quite a fiddly little set of robes and I really, really couldn't be bothered to do any more, I'll be honest. So I've used uh, I've used uh, Nasdrag Yellow a few times and I really like the effect that it comes out with. There's lots of little nooks and crannies in the uh, in the edging of this guy's robes so just using this as a single coat and you can do a little bit of a highlight afterwards if you really want but it's quite fiddly as you can see here trying to pick out all these bits but there's lots of little nooks and crannies in it which means that it will naturally sort of shade and highlight itself being that contrast paint so all we do is we just go around the entire model and paint in all the edging on his robes and uh, this is the stage we end up with and uh, you can see that nice blue and gold transition again fits in with the zinch color theme fits in with the thousand suns, fits in with the demons and you can see all that edging all the way around the outside, all around his belt and so on is now all complete, all around his neckline etc etc. So it's a nice little colour mix, gold to blue or yellow to blue always looks nice uh, but it still fits to the whole theme uh, even though I've gone with red legs just to make him look a little bit different. So we're now going to take Yushabti Bone and we're now going to highlight up all of the red sections of the model so you can see lots of skin going on here and this is a very, very shallow dry brush. Now there's lots of lots of definition in his legs, lots of little strainy lines. Now if you want to try and pick those out by hand, be my guest. This is where the magic of dry brushing comes in. And again, as, as gentle as you were with the white on the wings, you want to be as gentle, if not more gentle, with your shabti bone on the red to highlight this up. Picking out all around his toes, there's lots of little raised ridges and so on around the skin. And all we're going to do, this is going to be the only dry brush we're going to do on the legs. We're not going to take it any higher than this. And we'll just go around all of that red section and highlight it with your shabti bone. 
and this is the net effect. Now I've also just gone back into the inside sleeves of the guys, uh, the guys robes here, and just painted them in wraith bone as well. Uh, just that that contrast prime. Um, so not to worry about that. I've just gone on the inside of there because we're just going to use a little bit of. Uh, in fact, I use wraith seer, not not wraith bone. I use wraith seer or grey seer. Sorry, grey seer is the magic colour. I keep forgetting all of these new paint names. You can also see at this stage I've blended the neck in the purple to the red on the neck. All I did was a short, sharp airbrush of purple and then dry brushed that wraith, uh, that Ushabti bone over the top and that blended it in very nicely. This time we've gone with uh, Yandan yellow on uh, and Nasrak yellow on some of the details now. So all these weird little ornaments he's got hanging off of his belt and uh, some of the other gold sections. I've just gone over that. In fact, the, the main gold on his top of his arm is using proper yellow, so Retributor uh, gold. Same as the crown of the head. But all those little fiddly little bits of gold, um, I've used the uh, Iandan yellow and the Nasdrag yellow on the belt section, but proper proper gold on the larger gold sections, the bits that draw a bit more attention. And what we're going to do is shade those gold sections with uh, Reichlin Flesh Shade. It's always the best shade for me for regular gold paint. So we've let him dry a little bit, uh, and you can also see now, again, apologies, I did forget the camera section here, but the uh, the swirling uh, mess that comes out of his hand is all done with uh, two contrast paints and a dry brush, and that's all it is. So I've taken the uh, Athematic Blue and Volopus Pink, of the two colours that I've gone with. Again, thin down with a bit of the, uh, the contrast medium, so about 50-50 medium to paint. Painted in at the bottom section in purple, the bit that comes out of his hand, and then let that dry. And then using Athematic Blue, which actually looks like that Nilahik Oxide original technical paint, painted that over the top, and then where the two colours sort of combined, let it run in a little bit so that it kind of overlaps and forms a, a little mini join. And that's all I did for that. There's no, no special tricks in that. It's just two contrast paints over a, uh, a grey sear base. Now all we're going to do is dry brush all of that entire section in one colour as well. And all we're going to do is just dry brush that in white and that will fin finish the effect on his uh, weird and wonderful things that are coming out, of his, uh, coming out of his hand, forming that big spell. One of the other things I have done also is in the mouth area, is I redid that with uh, the contrast base paint as well. Use the same volupus pink inside the mouth. So all I've done is that. Again, it's just a simple... Uh, it's just a simple shade of paint from the contrast range, uh, very simple. But for this dry brush here on this, we're just going to be very careful, just very lightly dry brush in white. And it's a good point here to try and focus around the teeth area. Uh, lots of little uh, fangs and teethy bits all sticking out, so just making sure that the dry brush picks out those so we've got a nice little bit of detail. And you could really go to town on this if you really wanted, but to be honest, that effect just really worked for me whilst remaining very, very simple. And it blends up quite quite nicely. And again, also the colour palette choice matches my Flamers of Zinch. Because they are purple and they use Nilahik Oxide. This colour is almost identical. And that just works for me. So again, keeping the colour palette similar to the rest of my Demon Army. So it doesn't all stick out. So realistically, all we've got left to do is his uh, Staff of Cataclysm, which is a little bit warped. We're going to straighten that up uh, with some hot water a bit later on. Uh, but that's pretty much it, and some toes and some fingernails is all we've really got left. A little bit of gold jewellery floating around as well. Uh, again, exactly the same as with the others. I've just used um, uh, the standard gold, Reichland Flesh Shade, and then just sort of dry brush that back up again. Now we're going to be airbrushing his staff, so we need to mask off his hand. So I've used some Tamiya masking tape and then some regular masking tape around that, removing some of the stickiness by just you know, lifting and um, peeling it off of your, your your trouser leg just to lose some of that stickiness so you don't pull any paint off when you uh, use DIY masking tape. Now we're going to go back to our, our earlier colour palette of Warlord Purple and Squid Pink and we're going to airbrush the sort of the snaky effect that's all the way around the top of the staff and just underneath where his hand uh, grabs. It's a weird sort of serpentine look. And we're going to shade that with Caraburg Crimson and then there's going to be a light dry brush of white over the top. Um, and that's all we're going to do here. So this is a, a couple of stages of airbrush, uh, a directed shade with the Caraburg Crimson into the recesses and then a light dry brush of white. 
So we'll lightly airbrush the Warlord purple over the black first. And you can use that as a Zenith highlight as well. So you can leave the black showing underneath if you really want to. Um, I'm using the Karaberg to uh, to create my shade though. So uh, I didn't bother with that. I just angled it at both directions. And just being careful, we don't want to push too much paint where you've masked off. Because sometimes it can leak under your masking tape. So just be a little bit careful about where you're applying it. And just make sure you're aiming it at where you want to and not going completely crazy with your airbrush. Took a couple of coats of that Warlord Purple because it is quite a translucent paint going over black. And then we're going to move into Squid Pink and give it a light overspray of Squid Pink. Now for this effect I want to draw down from the top to bottom rather than angling up because you do want it to be a highlight. So you do want to kind of angle your airbrush at sort of 45 degrees to give that zenith effect so that the darker purple is underneath and the lighter pink is on the top. We need to leave that to dry for a little bit because those, uh, those airbrush paints are a little bit thin, um, but that's all we've done here. And as I've said, what I'm going to do is just uh, use the uh, Caraber Crimson to shade and a light dry brush. But what we've got all over here is also some little bits of eyeball that are sticking out through this weird staff of cataclysm. So all I'm going to do is just directly airbrush a tiny little bit of blue and a tiny little bit of white into, into those little eyeballs. Being really careful, low pressure, uh, and just force that into that little gap there. You can see that, that that's the larger eyeball, and it's just a nice little glowy, glowy blue blob now. And we're just going to pick out the other ones on the staff, and then once we've done those, we'll just give it a little blast of white as well. Once that last little bit of white is done, we're going to give it another little uh, slightly lighter dry brush of white just over the top, just in case there's any bits you might have missed. But I just want to be a little bit heavier here um, just to pick out a few more bits and pieces, especially around the, those eyeballs again. And it just make it really begin to pop. So we're right on the closing stages now. So what I've done is gone ahead and based him and added his claws in. Now for the, for the lava bases, I've actually already got a video from quite some time ago when I was doing my... Thousand Suns and Zinch Demons. Um, I've already got a technique of how to do that and I'll make sure that is all linked on the video and in the description below. So we don't have to repeat that step. Um, it's, a, it's a couple of days worth of effort but I think it looks pretty cool and matches into the rest of the army. So all I've done is super glue on all of the little toes that come with him as well and given those a little black prime and then we've gone over the black prime uh, with, uh, with regular black paint. Now to make those wings a little bit pop a little bit more, so uh, I did leave these before, but all I've done is add a few little white specks and white uh, little star marks into the wings, just to uh, just to add a little bit more effect. Now again, camera failure. Oh, this this video guide is really terrible. How many camera failures have I've got? But basically, I've painted the gold exactly the same as I've done with the headdress uh, and that top arm. So it's retributor armor. It's Reichland flesh shade. It's dry brush gold again and then a little bit of silver over the top and that's all I've done. And then for that glowing eye, all I've done is that uh, same effect that I did with the smaller eyeballs just on that bigger one. So it's a electric blue spray with a little bit of white in the middle to finish it off and that's the glowing effect. And then right at the bottom of the staff, I've just re-gone over that in grey sear and we're now going to use uh, the Basilicanum grey contrast paint mixed with some contrast medium. And we're going to give that a dash all over the bottom end of the staff. So we're going to let that run. There's lots of little ridges and details and there's going to be some gold trim in here as well. And the gold trim again will just be painted in Retributor armor, shaded in right and flesh shade. And then that will be the, uh, the gold trim. And that is that staff now finished. All we've now got to do is glue the components together and we are done. So that is just going to go in there, uh, just in there. So I'm going to super glue these all together. And then uh, when we come back, um, I'll have a little mini photo shoot so you can see the overall effect. So we're just going to use some super glue to get those components together. Put his other hand on. And that is Atios Raukarez all painted up. So there we go then guys, that is Atios Raukarez fully painted. 
Uh, I'm quite happy with the way it came out. A little bit of a mix of airbrush, regular painting, and contrast, showing you that all the different tools uh, that I use for painting large kits like this. This is the biggest monster that I've actually ever painted. I've painted all those titans and stuff, very different painting technique uh, required just because of the level of detail that we're talking about. So uh, yeah, it's good to be able to use all of those different tools in the painting arsenal uh, and giving them a good try on something like this. I'm pretty happy with the way that he's come out. He's been sat in a bag in my cupboard for far too long, so it's a good chance to get him all done. But I hope you enjoyed the journey following along as I painted this giant chicken. Uh, it's going to be added to my Chaos Zinch Demon Army very soon. I'm hoping to give him a run out at some point. Although, uh, realistically, uh, he's quite a lot of points. So uh, he's not going to appear in uh, very many games uh, of regular 40k. Uh, but please join me in part three of this mini-series. Where we'll be going in-depth and taking a look at his stats. Is he any good? Is he overpointed? Maybe. Is he underpointed? Mm, used to be. Uh, but that will be coming very soon to this channel and if you don't want to miss out on that make sure you hit that subscribe button click the little bell for notifications so you don't miss that next upload but i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i should catch you guys on the next video